popping YouTube fam, this is your boy J Money here and I'm bringing you guys what I like to call Luna Light 2.0. A lot of you already know what I'm talking about when I mentioned that, but for those of you who don't, I'm talking about Time Thieves. Yes, yes. Post Phantom Range gave it a huge boost, it can put out some absurd boards, it can go second, it can go first, it can do all, set up like um, anywhere in between 5 to 9 slash 10 interruptions, depending on your hand, that's how good this deck is if it gets going and all that. So, now before we continue, you know, be sure to hit that subscribe button and uh, go ahead and hit that notification bell so you don't, guys do not miss any future uploads coming from yours truly. Rogue will never go meta, meta will always go rogue. That is the motto of this channel so far outside of Rogue with Spice. So, for those of you who are, you know, like, such as myself, who was really disheartened by the injustice that Lunalite got with that Lunalite Tiger Ban, you wanted to do your four strict stuff, like, you just wanted a legitimate rank four spam deck look no further. I've got a few combos or test hands I'd like to show you guys, and we'll do test hands a little bit later, because this deck does depend on a lot of hypotheticals. So, all this being aside, let's go ahead and go to the laboratory so I can show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. Alrighty folks, here we are in the laboratory where good things happen. So, the thing about this deck is there are three key cards in this deck that you guys need to always, that you really want to see. And one is being Time Thief Regulator, one is Time Thief Winder, if I can find it, there it is. And the third card being Parallel Exceed. These three cards make a lot of good stuff happen for your deck. Um, of course, Regulator is your best card in your entire deck because it gives you access to Winder plus an additional body that also counts as another body. So, um, if you do not see one of these nine, um, there are some things you could still do, but you know, you're going to be missing out on some things. Let's just go ahead and uh, put that out there. But for the first combo, we are going to start off with Regulator. Um, just to see what it alone can do. Um, so there's all sorts of ways to variate uh, certain combos and all that. And I'll tell you a little bit later once we get there. So we'll go ahead and use our Regulator's effect. And we'll summon two Time Thieves from the deck. So this deck is essentially... Um, no different from it, your typical rank 4 uh, spam dot deck. Um, so you basically, if it's not obligatory, the monster either needs to be, it needs to either equal two level 4 monsters or it needs to be able to summon itself from the hand. So that's how we uh, structure this deck. So Time Thief Winder, when it's summoned, we can go and add a, um, a Time Thief card from deck to hand. We are going to add our Counter Trap Retrograde. Now we are going to proceed to overlay, and we are going to make a four strix. Using our four strix effect, we can detach, and we're going to add, you know, uh, the most familiar raid raptor being Singing Lanius. We're going to go and summon it, and before we make our wide strix, we're going to use our bezel ship in the graveyard, detach a material from an Xyz, and summon it out of the graveyard in its bench when it leaves the field. Now we can link these two wing beasts. Dark Wing Beast into our Raid Raptor Wide Strix, and we're actually going to summon out a different Raid Raptor than you guys may be used to seeing. We are going to summon out our Mimicry Lanius to the field with our Wide Strix. Uh, from here, we can go and overlay into a second Four Strix. Using its effect, we'll go and detach. It doesn't matter which one we detach. And we're going to add a Raider's Wing from our deck to our hand. That is going to um, trigger our Y Strix effect, setting a rank up from the deck. And we are going to, of course, go and dig for that Soul Shade Force. We are going to activate it. We're going to pay half our life points, summon it, plus an infinity on top of it so we can uh, protect the rest of our combo. There you go. All right, now we can go and reveal. Raider's Wing from the hand, detach to special summon it uh, before we link off into a Y Strix. 
Uh, Raider's Wing, if it's in the hand or the graveyard, uh, you can detach material from a dark Xyz monster and spell summon this card. Um, and uh, it's also treated as a Phantom Knights card, so you can, um, it has synergy with Rusty Bardi, it has synergy with uh, Ancient Cloak and stuff like that. Um, so we're going to use Rusty Bardish's effect, and we are going to send Silent Boots to the graveyard, and we are going to set, I guess, a Shade Brigandine. There it is. We're going to activate it. We're going to overlay into a Top 3 Perdure. Alright, now we can uh, activate our Silent Boots, and add us a Fog Blade. To our hand. Now we can use the effect of our Mimicry Ladies in the Graveyard. For those of you that don't know, uh, during the main phase of it's in the Graveyard because of was sent this turn, you can banish this and add a Raid Raptor card from your deck to your hand, except another copy of Mimicry Ladies. So, this counter trap right here just so happens to be a Raid Raptor card. So, with that being said, we have three trap cards, one being a Redoer with a trap under it, so we have uh, one interruption, two interruptions, three interruptions, uh, four interruptions with Redoer's effect itself, five interruptions with Infinity. So this is bare bones, uh, minimum five interruptions. So this is looking pretty solid. This is already nice, just off one card. Um, of course, you've probably seen Unbreakable Boards and FDKs of one card, but these are rank fours we're talking about, man. You know, so um, there's a couple more combos I want to show you, so I don't want to dwell on this any longer. Alrighty, gents. So what we got going on here is, let's say you do not open your regulator, nor you do not open a parallel of seas, but you do have a way to get to rank four, and you have a winder in your hand. So as I've said in the first combo, every monster that's not obligatory, being if it's not a time thief or it's not a phantom knight. It is going to either equal two bodies, which is damage juggler or trick clown or whatever, or it's going to be able to summon itself from the hand. And we have a lot of those. We got play multiples of the tinnies. We got dinotheriums. You know, we we have this stuff covered. So uh, we're going to start by revealing the tinny. We're going to summon it, and we're going to normal summon the damage juggler. Um, we're going to overlay, and we're going to make a four tricks. We're going to use a uh, force strikes effect. We'll detach uh, our damage juggler, and we will add our singing lanius if I can find it. Oh, well, there's hat tricker. We can go and just uh, set that to the side. Trick clown will be till next combo. Let's. Where is it? Where's singing lanius? Jesus Christ! There it is. Summon it. Banish damage juggler to add the hat tricker to hand. Since you do control two monsters, you can summon this. All right. Now we are going to make our Y strings. Oh, once again, summoning our Mimicry Lanius to the field. Overlay with the Hat Tricker, make a second four strings. Detach, and we're going to add. Uh, this time we are actually going to add a different Raid Raptor. We're going to add Strangolanius to hand from the deck. Um, now we're going to use the effect of our wise tricks, and that is going to allow us to set a rank up. Find it. It is right here. There you go. Activate it. Play half your life. Summon it and an infinity. It's because of Soul Shave Force that um, Strangolanius actually comes in real hot. Real, real hot. So, now what we're going to do is we're going to link these bad boys off and we're going to make a rusty bardish. We're going to use rusty bardish's effect and we're going to send ancient cloak to the graveyard this time. Alright. Uh, we're going to go and set... Um, we're going we're gonna to set the rank up. We're just going to go for the rank up uh, since we don't really know what else we got going on. We're going to do that real quick. So we're going to go and banish our cloak and we're going to add our boots so this new um i'll explain what this new phantom knights rank up does uh, when we get there uh we're going to special boots we're going to summon it in attack mode because we're going to use cyber dragon's infinity to target the boots and absorb it 
Then we're going to use the Time Thief Winder to detach the boots to summon the Winder uh, out from the hand. The reason why we do it this way is because um, uh, Boots is not a level 4, so it's going to be really, really hard to get it off uh, into the graveyard. Uh, this is why we do play one copy of Stain Greaves. I will actually feature that in the next combo as well, because Stain Greaves is actually really, really good in this deck if you open if you open it or if you open any other Phantom Knight, it's really strong. Um, with Winder, we're going to add Retrograde. Okay. Um, I do believe what we're going to have to do is, we, instead of grabbing Fog Blade, we're going to actually add our Shade Brigandine. We're going to banish the Mimicry Lanius from the graveyard as well. And we're going to add the other Counter Trap. We're going to add the Phantom Knight's uh, Raid Director's Phantom Knight's Claw. All right. So now that we got everything out of the deck we need, we're going to activate our Shape Brigadine, summon it, overlay into a Type 2 Doer. So it has a trap under it, so we have an interruption. So, with Shregolanius, if you control a Dark Monster, you can special summon this card. Uh, however, if you use this effect, you cannot summon monsters for the rest of the turn except Dark Monsters, so you have to um, structure your plays. Ahead of time, this has to be essentially one of the last things you summon, or else you'll forfeit your right to summon infinities and other things like such as that. But also, it has another nifty effect to where if there's an Xyz monster on the field that has a dark Xyz monster as a material, yep, I can target a Raid Raptor in my graveyard and special summon it. Its effects are negated, but that doesn't matter because we're just going to immediately overlay with it. Okay? And we are going to summon a Dark Rebellion XYZ Dragon. So, and now we're going to go and set a few cards. So, going back to this rank up, what does it do exactly? So, with this, you get to banish any number of Dark Monsters from your graveyard, target a Dark Xyz monster on the field, and summon a Raid Raptor Xyz Dragon or a um, Phantom Knight Xyz from my extra deck whose rank is um, equal to this plus the number of um, monsters I banish. So basically, uh, we're going to do it like this. We're just going to banish one dark monster because you have to banish darks. And it, and one plus four equals five, so you're summoning a rank five being Dark Requiem. Now you're typically going to save this um, just in case your opponent has droplet dark rulers and things like that. So. What are we looking at? We're looking at one interruption, two interruptions because there's a trap on a redoer, uh, three interruptions for re retrograde, uh, four interruptions for uh, the Phantom Knight's Claw. You can detach the other material off redoer. Uh, five interruptions when you summon Dark Requiem because it is in the zone of Rusty Bardish. You can pop a card. And then you have six interruptions, seven interruptions, and eight interruptions, which are all negates. So that's actually pretty strong and all that mess. So, um, yeah, this is pretty good. And you know what? This still isn't the best board you can possibly make, but we're not uh, looking at that. We are going to go to the next combo. We're going to showcase what happens if you don't open any of those three cards I mentioned. You don't see Parallel of Seed, Redoer, or um, Regular. What do you do? Well, let's find out. Alright, so this is when you open those weird hands. So what I mean by weird hand, I mean you didn't open Regulator, you didn't open Winder, and you didn't open Parallel Exceed. And yeah, so this goes back to what I was saying about deck building. Every other monster that's not a Phantom Knight, um, or any of the Time Thieves, um, you know, any monster that don't qualify as those, need to be a monster that can either equal two bodies or can special summon itself from the hand and we those qualify but you know you open a hand and you still don't open you know any of those cards but let's say you open a second normal summon that uh, equals two bodies again this could be anything this could be time thief chrono this could be bezel ship which you know, i surprisingly open more than i care to admit and let's say we open a phantom Knight. In this case, um, honestly, I don't think it really matters too much which Phantom Knight we open because I do believe the outcome is still the same. But let's say we open the Stained Greaves 
and all that what then um, this is going to be a combo where I show you that Stained Greaves is actually really really good in this deck like way better than Torn Skills because this deck is level 4's and Stained Greaves is the only fan that can, that can really modulate to level 4 and it does it twice so enough of the talk, enough of the chit chat, let's go ahead and get to started so we're going to summon the damage juggler, we're going to special summon our diamond, our special summon. This could be anything as well, it could be the Tenyi. Kage no Kage, if you really wanted to. If you don't want to run that risk, you're more welcome to do that as well. So this is one of those situations. You get a lot of niche scenarios to where this Boo Jin Link actually comes up. This bad boy takes two monsters of the same level. It cannot be used as Link material, and upon its Link summon, you target or you don't target, but you special summon one monster from your graveyard and one monster from your hand that match levels. Their effects are negated, and immediately after the effect resolves, XC summon. So you summon your four strix, and you're gonna activate it. Let's detach and let's add our singing lane to hand. True Cloud's gonna activate and summon itself out from the graveyard. Now you could say I was just fixing a hand, but again, this could be anything. It could be Bezel Ship. It could even be Winder. If it's Winder, it's even better. If it's Winder, again, Bezel Ship, Chronos, um, <laughs> activate Damage Juggler's effect, and we're gonna add Hat Tricker to hand as well. All right. Don't know if I want to summon it just yet. Bear with me, summon it, this is my hand, link, and we're going to make our Y Strix. Y Strix is going to summon what we've been summoning, being Mimicry Lanius, there you go, okay. Uh, overlay, oh, actually, I'll save the trick clone, I'll actually summon the hat tricker, mm -hmm. just in case, man, just in case. Overlay, make another force, activate. This is going to add us Strangolanius for the second time. Activating a Y Strix, or yeah, Y Strix effect. Set Soul Shape Force, activate Soul Shape Force. Pay your points. Summon your Force Strix out of your graveyard and summon your Cyber Dragon Infinity to protect the rest of your uh, combo. Now, since this cannot be used as Link Material, you can absorb it with Infinity as material so you can free up that zone. So that is an easy workaround from that. We're gonna go and link three into Rusty Bardish. And when a Phantom Knight is special summoned, you can reveal this thing Grease in hand, special summon it, and then you can increase its level by one, which is that's exactly what we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna use Rusty Bardish's effect. We're gonna foolish burial. Um uh, Ancient Cloak, and we're going to set Phantom Knights of Shade Brigandine to the field. Okay. Uh, now we're going to use our uh, Cloak effect, and we're going to add our Silent Boots. We're not going to summon the boots just yet. There's still some things we need to do first. Um, we need to find a way to detach. That is uh, one key element that we need to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to overlay and we are going to make a, ooh man, hold on, hold on, we're going to make a, um, ooh, on, time thief for doer, yeah I believe this is the right choice, we're going to make time thief for doer. And then we're going to special summon our Strangolanius from the hand. We're going to use this effect. And we're going to oh, summon a Raid Raptor from the graveyard. That's not Mimicry Lanius because we are going to have to banish that for another effect. But overlay these two and summon Time Thief Perpetual. We are locked into darks for the rest of the turn. So do keep that in mind. We're going to banish our Mimicry Lanius and we're going to add our Counter Trap. There we go, a Raid Raptor's Phantom Knight Claw. Now, we're going to summon our Silent Boots and do some stuff, but in order to finish and put this in the graveyard, we the only way we could put it in the graveyard is by detaching it as a material. So you can either A, summon it and attach it with Infinity and detach if you haven't used a Bezel Ship or something, 
But if you have, if you haven't and you don't have access to it because you didn't access Winder or Regulator, there is a way around this. We're going to use Perpetual's effect to target Redoer and attach a bezel ship to the Redoer as a material. From there, now we're going to use Redoer's effect. We're going to banish him. So that puts bezel ship in the graveyard. And more importantly, that puts Stained Greaves in the graveyard. So, you can use both of his effects. So his second effect lets you banish him to summon a Phantom Knight from the hand. And then you can increase, you have the option to increase that one by one, which we are going to do because it's a rank four deck. Now, we're going to activate the Shade Brigadine, and we're going to go and summon it. And we're going to overlay. And we're going to summon our Dark Rebellion I Don't Care Dragon as we used to call it back in 2015. All right, now that we've summoned the Rebellion, we have to remove the Solemn Boots. So we're gonna detach from the Boots to summon Bezel Ship, just so we can put the Solemn Boots in the graveyard. Now we can go and banish Silent Boots, and we can add our Rank Up Magic. So, the Rank Up Magic Force just got added. Right now, if I had another level four, this will be even better. Now, granted, if I did, I would have just made Reflasia instead before I locked myself in the dark. So, you know, let's not kid ourselves too much here. So, we're gonna go and set two. Noro and phase, Redoer comes back. So, what are we looking at? So, this is going to automatically equal another interruption, whether it be attaching a trap card on Redoer or attaching another card on Rebellion, so when I make Requiem, I get an, uh, an additional muscle to get. Whichever situation I'm needing, if I need to get rid of a card to stop it from trying to activate. So, right now, we're looking at, you know, two cards that can still... Uh, produce us some interruptions if we do get dark ruled here because we didn't get winder we don't have access to retrograde you know so that is something that we have to keep in mind um if you are figuring dark roller it's game two game three try to play off of like these cards as much as you can before then so when they do activate the dark ruler you have a negate here you can still summon a requiem and you have two more negates um on top of that so so, we're looking at one interruption from Infinity, we're looking at a, uh, two because Perpetual can attach from either of these, uh, three from summoning the Requiem on the Redoer, and you got four and five at the very minimum. So at the very minimum, it doesn't look that strong, but you do have a lot of follow-ups, you can attach materials. You have another interruption here actually, what am I saying? It's a DD Crow. I actually did this against a Dragon Link player. He made Striker Dragon. He went for the effect to uh, grab Rocket Recharger from the graveyard. And I just used Flyback instead of this. They're both the same card. And uh, yeah, just caved this stuff in. So anyway, um, this took a little bit. But I feel like this is important to kind of see, you know, just proper deck building, you know, because you're not going to always open those juicy cards that you always want to open. So you need to be able to have a deck build to where if you don't see those cards, you're going to be fine. You're going to be A-OK. -okay. So with that being said, guys, this video took way too long. So let's go. Alright guys, that will do it for the combos right now. The, the next video will be replays featuring this deck in action, featuring variables. And all that mumbo jumbo that you guys want to see, hand traps, you know, on side deck cards, you name it. That's pretty nice, isn't it? It feels like Luna Light, doesn't it? With all the level fours hitting the board, all the overlaying and all that stuff. Feels good to play Luna Lights again, quote unquote. But um, anyway, hmm. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Jay Money, and I am signing out. But to wonder